Hey guys, Rolly or Taylor here, and today I'm finally back with another Dead Matter video. Now, in the last Dead Matter video, I covered everything up until pretty much this point. I think it was to the last update in August I covered up until. But today, we've got a major update, the September the 10th update. And in this one, we have a release date for the 0.7 update. So this is a fairly long blog post. I'm going to quickly jump to the meat of it, which is when will 0.7 be released. And that is on Halloween, actually, the 31st of October. It will be released or pushed to the experimental single player branch. Anyway, with that being said, let's jump into the rest of the video. So first up, hey survivors, welcome to another weekly wrap up. We had a busy week here at the office and have some great stuff to show off. We've also got an update on the current status of 0.7, which will be going live into the experimental branch on the 31st of October. Now, if you live in Calgary, this is a perfect chance to get your first peak of 0.7 because they'll be at the Calgary International Film Festival. We're gearing up for our presence at the Calgary International Film Festival. If you or someone you know is in the Calgary area, feel free to drop by and say hi. We'll have some exclusive reels of footage from the game and the 0.7 update. Our team members Mike and Victor will be there talking shop and giving away some postcards and other collectible knickknacks. Now if anyone watches this video and is from Calgary, let me know and if you do decide to go, I'll definitely pay for postage. The festival will be held September the 23rd through to October the 3rd and our booth will be at the All Claire Cineplex. So 0.7.0 update. As mentioned at the start of this update, we will be shipping 0.7 into Experimental on Halloween. Experimental builds can be opted in via Steam when they are available. They are single player only builds and are mostly focused on fixing any crashes that the client or the server may potentially encounter. One client crashing is not the same as a dedicated server crashing and ruining the experience of 40 plus players. Once major issues and crashes that occur in single player have been resolved, crash reports and feedback left in game is key and they have that really good feedback tracker that's implemented within game so make sure we're using that. We will be spinning up the official dedicated servers while the build is still in experimental as the last phase of moving the patch from experimental to the current live version of the closed alpha. Once 0.7 is out of experimental, we will be moving 0.6 to a different branch on Steam that will serve as an archive. This is because we want to demonstrate very clearly where the game was and the direction that we are heading. I really like that touch actually, just to prove how much has gone into 0.7. We've seen well, I mean, if you've seen my last video, you'll know how much has gone into it. And it would be kind of cool to maybe go back and forth between the builds if that's an option and just see the massive changes. But why has 0.7 taken so long? Again, I've covered this multiple times, but it's pretty much a massive overhaul patch. And this is what they go on to say. As we have stated multiple times, 0.7 is a massive overhaul patch. We have started from a brand new Unreal project while only retaining chunks of the old codebase as our starting point. This is so we could go through all of our assets and either re-import them from their original source or porting them from the old project by exporting the object and re-importing it into the new project. I don't ever think I've said importing, exporting so much in my life. We went through the entire process because of the issues that our old map was facing as well as the content having heaps of issues that were all related to the fact that our content contained files dating back to 2016. This was mainly done for the sake of resolving multiple issues related to performance and those performance issues are pretty much what I've talked about so much and which almost ruined the experience of the game for me and that was the hitching. We know from previous blog posts that they have all but eliminated the hitching now. It makes far more sense to create a clean slate, use our existing content and move forward with periodic testing than to try and make what was already there work. It has been an admittedly painful road filled with a lot of long nights, but we ultimately feel that this was the best path to follow in order to achieve a more realistic and more performant version of the game. So guys, as you can see that it just sounds incredible and extremely exciting actually how much work has gone into 0.7 and I can't stress enough that it will be worth visiting the Dead Matter website and just going through all of the previous blog posts. I know I mentioned it a lot in my last video, but there is seriously a lot to go in and I didn't cover all of it in that video. 
Now that's a long list here of what will be different in 0.7. I'm not gonna go through all of it, but I'm just gonna pick out some key points. So if you wanna go through this whole list, there'll be a link to it in the description. This is a brief list of bullet points that summarize some of the more important changes coming in 0.7. And this is not a complete list of changes and we will be providing a final list when 0.7 ships. We are simply posting this to illustrate the changes that will be upcoming. So vehicles have been refactored. This includes wheeled vehicles and the helicopter you could spawn in the development command. So that's gonna be sick. Flying around with your buddies in a helicopter in Dead Matter's new and improved Calgary is gonna be a barrel of fun. Infected have been rewritten. We can see that from these clips on your screen. They now vault, they run, they chase you better. It's gonna be, I, I suppose it's gonna be harder to survive now. Human NPCs are now derived from the same base class as the player and traders and NPCs that you can speak to in 0.6 have been entirely replaced with AI controlled version of the player. We've seen a sneak peek of the missions and they look incredible now. They look so much more fluid and actually a lot more interesting. New weapons and gunplay. Many weapons have received animation tweaks. And a cool new little feature is that you can now find legendary weapons in the world and these weapons cannot have their attachments edited. They also have a unique name associated with them. Now, if you're like me, a big Division fan, then you'll know that they have like named weapons and exotic weapons within the game. This is what I feel like these legendary weapons are and that's going to be pretty cool to find. Inventory and loot. So loot now spawns in the world as physical items rather than being entirely based on searching containers. Thank God, I absolutely love this feature in Daisy and seeing the loot on the floor and on the cabinets and stuff. I'm, I actually haven't read all of this through before making this video. So I've only just read that now and I'm super excited by that. You can now pick up backpacks that you find in the world rather than the backpack being a container. So again, that's just a lot of cool loot changes here graphical improvements and we've seen this so much and we're going to see some more pictures in a minute it looks incredible distance field ambient occlusion is no longer in use and artifacting within interiors has been significantly reduced volumetric fog has been removed interiors now have better reflections enabling a far cleaner look on metallic surfaces weather effects on the surfaces of objects will no longer appear indoors Dead Matter now has volumetric clouds and you can fly into them for the time being. Some objects in Dead Matter now have retro reflective shading. We've seen this on the jackets, a very cool little touch. And also Dead Matter now supports DLSS and will be available in 0.7 as soon as possible. So one really cool change that I'm glad to see is that character skin has been changed. I hated the character models in the 0.6 and we can see the difference here. They just look so much better. So more level design, we have some clips from some newly developed map sections. The first gallery showcases a local campground in the Sieb area, a once lively weekend getaway left in almost vacant shambles, aside from a few brave scavengers and the infected. So I don't think you understand how good these graphics look. I know it's a picture and I definitely recommend going to the blog to check this out and making it as big as possible, but this looks so much better than the previous version of Dead Matter. It almost looks like a brand new game actually. So the second showcase is a newly filled out gas station, a living monument to the looting, violence and desperation following the outbreak. And again, this just looks stunning. It genuinely looks like there has been an apocalypse or, you know, a collapse of society, something that did kind of lack in the original Dead Matter world. So props off to the level design team there. And that's it guys. Honestly, I really wanted to get this video out today. Uh, I know it's gonna be late for a lot of European viewers. You'll probably be seeing this on Sunday morning, but this update was just too good not to create a video on. We finally have a rough release date for 0.7, albeit the single player and experimental branch. It's gonna be great. And you bet I'm gonna have videos on that as soon as it does drop. But I'm gonna stop rambling now. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video and are a fan of survival games, then make sure you sub to the channel and have that bell notification active so you never miss a future video. With that being said, take care and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.